Hello everyone. Let's learn the concept of invariance today. And we will do that using a problem from IOQM 2021. This is problem number 20. And if you're just here for the answer, the answer is 75. Okay. Just as usual, we will first learn the concept and then we will do this problem as an application and then in the link in the description I'll give you some more practice problems so that you can actually have a good grasp of this particular idea because if you do that then at a later point you can use this idea and in a different problem right that's the main goal okay so what is the concept the concept is this that suppose in a particular problem a bunch of things are changing and things have gone wild you have no control over certain parts of the numbers and they are kind of changing all over the place so in this sort of situation you look for something that does not change some quantity that remains constant no matter how the other parts are changing and that quantity is known as the invariant of the problem the invariant something that does not change i'll give you an example suppose if i say that you have a bunch of odd numbers so consecutive odd numbers starting from one so one three five and so on you have no control over how many odd numbers are there it starts from one they come one after another that much we know but you have no control on the number of odd numbers taken okay add all the numbers you have taken Take the number of divisors of it, add all the numbers you have taken, take the number of divisors of it, divide that by 2 and the remainder is always 1. It's nothing, it's very simple because this particular sum will always be a perfect square and in a different place in number theory module in, in Achinta you will learn that square numbers always have odd number of divisors. So if you divide the number of divisors by 2, then the remainder is 1. Okay, that's very simple. It's a very simple example. It's not really an invariant problem. Uh, it's a really a number theory application. But if you look at the link in the description, there are really good problems from invariance principle. You can use them to learn this concept. Let's go into the problem. That's the second part. The problem is this. That there is a group of women so when I say a group you at once notice that the number of people in the group is not given so that could be something that is not necessary for this particular problem so we can take this as n in the final computation the value of n will not be necessary because otherwise it would have been given right so a group of women is performing a job and in 45 hours they can complete the work in 45 hours they can complete the work one work is completed in 45 hours if they work if they work together which means that 45 n working hours are necessary to do one work right so in one working hour 1 over 45 n amount of work has been accomplished now this is a very important step 
in a any time and work problem. You try to compute what happens in one working hour and that is sort of the turning point. Okay. This is the first data that is given. The second thing that is given is they do not start working together. So the person one begins and then after some interval, let's say D hours, person two begins after another D hours, person three begins and like this it goes on up to person N. So you can easily imagine what is the how many hours after person one person n is starting right uh, in fact if the person one works for t hours person two works for t minus d hours person three works for t minus 2d hours person n works for t minus n minus 1d hours right so that is the next thing that is given finally it is also given that the number of hours person one has worked in the project that is five times the number of hours person t has worked person n has worked so let's write that t is equals to five times t minus n minus one into d that's also given to us okay so these are the three pieces of data that is given to us what do we want to find out? Well, find out T, the number of hours person 1 has been working for. Okay, so how do we go about it? It's very simple. Let's organize the data. So, total hours put in. Let's find it out. Total hours put in. The person 1 puts in T hours. Person 2 puts in T minus D hours. Person 3 puts in T minus 2 D hours. Until person N puts in T, min T, plus, uh, T minus N minus 1 D hours. Right? So this is equals to N times T plus. Okay. So this is negative D, negative 2 D negative n minus 1 into d so this is very simple you can just add up these d's so maybe i can take a negative d common so we have 1 plus 2 up to n minus 1 these are triangular numbers you should know how to add them i'm not going to explain it here but this become this comes up to be n t minus d times n into n minus 1 by 2 okay so this is becoming n by 2 times 2t minus n minus 1 into d these are the this is the total number of hours that has been put in this is the total number of hours that has been put in by all the people right so how much work are they doing in this uh this many hours well in one hour remember in one hour one over 45 n fraction of work is getting accomplished so this many hours you just multiply by that 2t minus n minus 1 into t right so this amount of work is getting accomplished and then cancels and this is the total number of work because that is the total number of hours that has been put in to complete the total work so this is equal to one complete work right okay so we have this we have 1 over 90 times 2t minus n minus 1 into d is equal to 1 great one more thing we have here is this data t which is the first person's amount of work is equal to 5 times the last person's amount of work so we can let's use that so we have from here 4t is equal to n minus 1 
into d times 5. So n minus 1 into d is 40 by 5. n minus 1 into d is 40 by 5. Right? Okay, so that is great. Now we can come back and apply it here. So we can apply it here. Change this into 40 by 5. So this becomes 1 over 90 times 2t minus 40 by 5 is equal to 1. And you know t is the number, amount of work that the first person has done, which is basically our invariant quantity. It does not depend on the number of people working. It does not people at depend on what interval the next person is coming to work, which is great. So this is just a simple arithmetic now. You can just compute it and tell me the value of t in the uh, comment in the description. And also check out the link that contains all the other practice problems related to invariance. Though this problem gave us an invariant quantity, we really did not use the invariance principle to solve this problem. We just used arithmetic. So there are other problems in the link which contains the invariance principle and the practice problems related to that. So try those, keep on doing great mathematics and I'll see you in the next one.